Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with Jamie and Leslie Collard of Collard Properties Inc. And we're talking about apartments uh, and value add apartments specifically. And I'm so excited to jump into this topic with Jamie and Leslie. They've got a ton of experience and they've been doing this for a while now. Before we get into it with Jamie and Leslie, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, Let's get into it. Jamie, Leslie, thanks so much for being here today. Uh, why don't we start off with a bit of an introduction on who you guys are and what you do as real estate investors. Sure, yeah, thanks for having us. We're very excited about this. So uh, Jamie and I have been real estate investors actually not that long. <laughs> so about uh, four years ago, we started with Keyspire, bought our first property in February of 2017 and we've now accumulated a portfolio of 88 doors in uh, canada one door in curacao and we're closing on another 39 doors this month yeah so our focus is primarily commercial multifamily now yeah so background on us i'm a auto mechanic by trade yeah. i own an auto mechanic shop that i have that i uh, have mechanics running it themselves and then leslie used to be a probation officer yep my so previous life yeah. yeah. So you guys can fix everything and evict tenants when necessary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What was the first uh, transaction you guys did as real estate investors? Uh, we actually purchased this tiny little uh, single family home in Woodstock. It was like, um, what, 650 square feet and uh, paid $106,000 for it. Did a complete burr on it for like $12,000. And uh, when we refinanced it, bought our duplex uh, the following day after the refinance, eh? Yep. And, and, uh, yeah, it's just snowballed from there, basically. Yeah. Yep. So what was the transition like from buying those uh, singles and duplexes into what was, what was the decision-making process to go to the larger buildings and when did that happen? So that happened about, about a year and a half ago, we decided that um, we had so many little projects going on that we had contractors bouncing all over the place mm -hmm. from one property to the next and back and forth and such. So we kind of decided that let why not go bigger and have all our contractors just stay in the same building and go from unit to unit. There would be a lot easier that way and, yeah. and probably just a lot of money savings that way. Yeah, and I think a, a big defining factor in that too was the fact that we had a couple of bad appraisals. Not bad appraisals, but low appraisals. Every single real estate investor has had some low appraisals. And, uh, you know, with commercial multifamily, your uh, the value of your building is simply based off your net operating income. So for me, it is less, I mean, I mean, it's not less stress, but it just makes more mathematical sense for us to be within the commercial space. Yeah. And Leslie, just explain that for people that don't know what net operating income is. How do they come up with that number? How does the how does the property generate the net operating income? Yeah. So basically, um, the net operating income is the total amount you're left with um, after uh, your income minus your expenses. So. Um, the reason that we love the net operating income so much and value based on the capitalization rate is because every time I increase my net, net operating income by $1, the value of the building now increases by $20. So, um, you know, just it, even with some simple math on that, if we increase the net operating income by $1,000 uh, a year, which is very simple to do in like one unit, um, then the value of my building has already increased by uh, $24,000. So, you know, good math. <laughs> sure. And, and that's using a cap rate, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yep. What's the cap rate you guys are using to come up with that uh, number? So normally the cap rate that we're, we're working with in, um, uh, so we invest mostly in Brantford, Hamilton, Woodstock, uh, we, we do have some now up in uh, Aurelia and Beria area, um, but we're, we're working, our buildings are usually based around the 5% cap rate, yeah. 5 to 5.5% in this area, for mortgages anyway, 5 to 5%. Yeah. So what was the first multifamily that you bought? We kind of went big. Yeah. So, <laughs> go big or go on. 
we had the biggest thing we had was a fourplex at the time, and uh, we ran into a 22-unit building yeah. in Brantford, and yeah, we jumped on it. Um, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. I don't know if yeah. I would suggest everybody just I don't really jump right that. in. It was a lot of stress, <laughs> and it wasn't easy to make that happen. But yeah, uh, that's what we did for our first one. How yeah. did you uh, How did you find it? How did it come about? Well, my sister is actually a property manager yeah. and works for the company. And we just happened to reach out to her and told her, you know, we, we kind of decided we want to go towards apartment buildings. Do you know of any? And she goes, yeah, I do actually. Yeah. And passed us along a number to call a guy and he hadn't put it on the market yet, but was thinking about it. And after some talking, we ended up purchasing it. Yep. Nice. And so was it just because the building was in a certain shape that you decided to do value add or was it something that you, when you made that decision to go with, with larger buildings, that was the strategy that you wanted to look at? Yeah, we just wanted to yeah. continue on doing our burr strategy essentially that we've been doing with all our houses yeah. and just continue that right into apartment buildings. So, you know, when, when we're looking at apartment buildings, kind of what we're looking for is we want rents to be at half the value of what they should be yes that's mm. kind of what, that's our goal if we can double the rents we know we can make some good money off that building so yeah. that's kind of what we're looking at essentially the numbers that we look at i guess is uh you know we want to be able to make in our pocket after expenses are paid about a hundred thousand uh, dollars per door so um that seems a little bit crazy, but in our area with um, the rents being as high as they are and so many buildings that landlords, um, you know, they've taken care of them. They're just older people that, you know, love to have the, the income, they're paid off, um, but they've never increased the rents and they've had tenants there for 10, 15 years. So those are the kind of buildings that we love, eh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah typically it's somebody that doesn't necessarily know what they're doing. They maybe just bought the building yeah. and just held on to it and no rent increases. Yeah. Really haven't updated the building at all. So yeah, we love them. That's what we love. <laughs> yeah. And so after you found that first one, obviously you've built your portfolio from there. So was it similar type process for these uh, off market deals or were you able to tell, were you able to source your other projects after your, uh, was it your sister that is the property manager? Yeah. Well, then, the next one we bought was a sixplex that my uncle actually had. Yes. <laughs> so it's a family business then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so. Uh, we don't shy away from MLS listings. Yeah. So we take a, a really close look at uh, opportunities that other investors walk away from, especially those buildings that are in such poor shape that it, it uh, scares other investors. Mm. So we hear if we read in a listing or, or talk to a listing agent and uh, we find out that there's not been two, um, or asbestos, we're like, put an offer in because you'll get a, you know, you'll get, usually get those buildings at a discount. And we go in and completely renovate every inch of the building anyway. Um, so we turn tough buildings into um, high end rentals. That's just our business model. Um, so if there's knob and tube and asbestos, I don't care. I will buy that building and it's going to be, it's going to be fixed anyway. So, yeah, it usually means there's no competition, right? And you can usually get a much, discount, yeah. uh, scare some investors away. And yeah, we can go in there. And I mean, we have walls open and stuff during our renovations anyways. Yeah. So it doesn't make that big of a difference to us. So. Nope. Yeah. So when you're talking about that, I'm guessing that there's the, the banks are obviously a little reticent to maybe finance those buildings. Um, are they in a position where the, the, the capacity or like the, the vacancy is relatively decent still? Or are you getting bank financing off the top? Are you using private money or how are you acquiring the buildings uh, from a financial perspective? So a little bit of both actually. So um, most of them have bank financing on it. Uh, some that we've had to close quickly, um, it's all through private capital. Um, but we do use other people's money for down payment, closing costs, reno budget. Um, and then uh, some of the buildings, it's also joint, financial joint venture partners as well. So um, we also have some buildings that are, uh, you know, shareholders money that's in it. So we use all different strategies and um, we're not afraid of, uh, you know, private lending or we're not afraid of private mortgages because we know it's a short-term 
strategy. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to hope that our renovations are completed within 12 to 24 months, to, depending on the size of the building. So, I mean, if I have to pay a little bit more upfront on, uh, you know, mortgage, yeah. it's not a panic situation for yeah, us at all. We just work those numbers right into our renovation costs. So yeah. that, yeah. that interest, extra interest you have to pay just gets worked in the reno cost. If it works, it works. If not, on to the next one. Yep. So are you guys predominantly bringing in equity partners on transactions and private money? Uh, or are you owning outright and just having some private financiers come in to do the renovation? And then ideally on the takeout, it's all you. We've done a little of everything, it's to be honest. It's all of the above, yeah. <laughs> so we like to, um, we do it a little bit differently where we bring in joint venture partners on the bigger buildings, but it's more of a, a coaching strategy, so to speak. So our joint venture partners are basically learning the ins and outs of exactly what we do and how to burr um, apartment buildings. So we're not taking on just, um, you know, just a financial partner who has no interest in learning, uh, you know, the full strategy. Um, we want them to be active and have the ability to go out after, you know, the burr is finished and buy as many apartment buildings they want on their own and, and be set up that way. Um, we do have uh, properties that we own personally um, or within our corporation, it's just us. Those buildings, um, normally, if it's a higher risk opportunity, Jamie and I just take those on ourselves. Mm. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to mess with investors, investors money. Investors or, yeah, like those are, you know, that's a, a whole different strategy. So they've always worked out really well, but. <laughs> So I like that actually. I think it's a really smart idea in terms of the ones that you feel are a little bit more, um, you know, for lack of a better word, risky. Like you said, I think it's nice that you can take them on. You have that ability to to uh, sort of get the project from beginning to end and not really have to worry about bringing anybody anybody else in. And it also leads to, you know, um, really furthering your track record in the business where people can see you've done those tougher buildings and brought them up to, to where you thought they were going to be able to get to. What, um, what is, can you uh, run through maybe a, a recent project that you've worked on or something that uh, you just completed or that you're working on now? Maybe give us an idea of some numbers, if you don't mind sharing, like what the building was acquired for, what the rents were, what you're renovating for, uh, what, the, what the refinance might look like, uh, if you're okay with sharing some of those numbers. Yep. You wanna go through St. Thomas property? Yep. So we have a St. Thomas property that we have, we're closing the end of this month. Uh, it's a three, 33 unit yep. uh, complex. So it has a 14 unit apartment building and then a bunch of row housing. Mm -hmm. So two, there's a row of two story housing and then a row of one story housing. Um, so that property, we have it under contract for 3.6 million. Yep. Uh, we need about another million to renovate. Yeah, just under a million. Just that's under a, a million. That's a very high budget. That's a... Just because we're not sure exactly what we'll be getting into, but... we This is a project we've done during COVID, so yeah. it's been a little different. <laughs> we haven't been able to actually Get into walk every unit. Into every unit, but yeah. um, it seems like a really good deal. We went high on yeah. our budget. Um, the after repair value, we're looking at somewhere around 6.6 .6 million when it's done. Um, some of these rents, we will at least double, if not come close to tripling. Yep. So there's some big upside there. Yeah, great building, uh, great location, and actually a wonderful owner too. Yep. It, it, it the even seller has, is such a nice man. It even has great uh, curb appeal as it is. Yeah, it like does. Like they've taken care of it. Um, it's just been poorly managed a little bit. Yep. Um, needs us in there to uh, get the right tenants, I guess. Yep, so strategy with that one is that we hope the renovation will be uh, finished in 12 to 18 months. Um, what we do is we target to have 25% of the building vacant and under renovations at all times. Mm -hmm. So um, a good plus for us is that when we put the uh, offers in on buildings like this, we always ask that if any uh, units become vacant during the due diligence or um, you know when it's under contract, that the seller is not allowed to, to put tenants in place. Mm. We're walking into this building already with um, three units three vacant, units. Um, maybe even more by then, I'm not sure. So 
six months. So if I ran my calculations quick, you're you're picking up at about 110,000 a door. Is that kind of about right? Is that is that a target that you're looking at? Is do you have a number that you like to look at on a per door basis? Okay. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> what we're really looking for is when we're done our renovations, at the least, we need to have all our money for our renovations back and all our down payment and closing costs back. That is like our minimum number. Yeah. Mortgage broker likes to see about a hundred to hundred and twenty five thousand dollars per door in most areas. Some areas are the exception. Um, obviously, GTA, you know, we, you can get financing on, on a much higher per door basis. Um, Hamilton property, though, we bought a uh, 12, well, it was recognized as a 12 unit at that point. We ended up with CMHC coming in right off the hop at 200,000 a door, and that was without renovations done. So, I mean, every area is a, is a little bit different, but um, we do like the 100 to, you know, hundred and fifty thousand dollar range is pretty ideal for us. I would say, yeah. Is that on the front side or on the back side? On the front side. Right. And then you're putting in what thirty thirty five thousand a unit on this on this project? Yep. Yeah. And so it's all basically cosmetic reno, uh, yep. top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we budget uh, twenty five for a one bedroom, thirty for a, a two bedroom. Um, and then a $5,000 contingency for HVAC, plumbing, all that kind of stuff, electrical. And then uh, exterior right off the hop, we budget 100,000. Exterior and common areas actually, 100,000. Some buildings, that's a lot more. Um, we have a grant for building that we, uh, once we got in there and realized, you know, how much uh, was actually needed, you know, our 100,000 common area budget has gone to 200,000 common area budget, but that's, it is what it is. We'll get that money back. So, yeah. yeah. And so you're using, um, on this one, is this, is this being purchased with bank financing and then private money is coming in to finance the renovation? Is that correct? This one, we have a, a financial JV partner on that one. So, um, but we do have bank financing on it. And then we actually have uh, PTV. So, yep. It, this is an interesting project. So um, oh. the bank did 65% uh, loan to value on that one. Um, and then the seller did a 10% PTV. Mm -hmm. And then they're doing a third position uh, construction loan. The seller is. The seller is. So um, he's been very nice. Yeah. We actually like this guy a lot. He's, you know. I can see why. Yeah. yeah. And well, then, he's getting out to get into more passive stuff. Like that's uh, cool. He wanted yeah, we gave him a good out, and he was going to invest his money in mortgages. So he's yeah. basically said, I'll do it for this much. I'm going to invest it anyways. I don't mind doing it in the building I know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. why not start there, right? If, if that's what he's interested in getting into, it's like a perfect segue to get out of the active investing and more into the passive investing right there. Yeah, so. Exactly. What uh, on the back side of that transaction, then I'm guessing you've, you'll have, do you have a pre-approval in place before you get going? Or do you just kind of have a, an idea of what you're going to be looking at with your NOI on the back side to be able to go to traditional financing? Yeah. So we run a Performa before we even go in and see a building. So Performa is just basically, uh, what does a building look like now? What's the net operating income? It basically tells me the exact value of the building. So after I have all the income and expenses, um, it's very quick for us to run these numbers, like 30 minutes tops. Um, then, you know, another page on that talks about, you know, down payment, closing costs, um, legal fees, like you name it, it's all in there. And then we have another page on there, uh, spreadsheet, I should say, on there that uh, shows the after repair value. Um, and the renovation costs. Um, so we send all of that to our mortgage broker. Before we even go see the property, he gets back to us and says, this is what I can get you right now as a loan to value. And then after the BRRRR strategy is completed, we can get you this much. So um, right then and there, we know whether or not we're going to hop on the phone. Um, and normally this whole process takes less than two hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it takes longer at the mortgage broker, but I mean, 
to do the actual spreadsheet, it doesn't take that long yeah. now that we've done enough. Yeah. yeah. And so what are your roles and responsibilities? Uh, you know, who's handling renovation? Who's handling, are you guys hiring out property management? Like what, how much are you doing yourselves and how much are you outsourcing? So right now our business is so busy and, and such that we, we actually have a full-time property manager that'll be taking care of that. Um, yep. He's, he also works for us not doing just property management stuff. So he's also a real estate investor. Yeah. He's a real estate investor. So he's going to help us. Cam uh, Baker of Baker property management. I highly yep. recommend him. But he's going to help us uh, oversee some of the construction. Yeah. Um, we'll oversee a bunch of the constructions. We already have a crew lined up to go. Um, they've we've took them and shown them the empty units already, so they know what to expect. Um, and then we have a joint venture partner that also will. They want to learn, so they, they want to learn, yeah. learn how to do it too. So we're going to have some uh, some work for them to do as well. Yeah, and we use uh, we do use a project management software. So we use Monday.com, game changer, serious game changer for me. So I was the one that had sticky notes <laughs> all over our, our, our uh, kitchen island um, and lists, uh, literally lists for each property. And then I was like, this is crazy. So I got the software and it's amazing. So everybody has their own login. Um, we have it set up per property and we just tag people in there of what their task is to do. Everybody knows to go in and update the software when something's done or to figure out, you know, you know, when does the electrician need to go in there? Our project manager can go in, just simply do it, makes a note and says, call them, he's coming here. So even our joint venture partners, they all get their own login. So they are such an active part of these BRRRR strategies and um, it's extremely helpful, eh? Extremely helpful. Yeah. So. You guys, um, you make it sound so easy and I know that that's, that's not the case. This is a ton of work. Um, how did you learn essentially how to, how to do this? I mean, I know that uh, it's something that as investors, it's, it's a jump, it's a leap that many people want to take. And what is your advice for somebody that wants to get into this space? What's the first thing that they should do? Is there some education that you did that you really thought was that was helpful, that was useful? Um, how did you uh, how did you how did you take the big step? Yeah, so education, get educated. Um, we've seen so many people that have tried to do this without a mentor behind them, and um, it's hard. I'm not saying that you can't do it without a mentor, but you're going to make more mistakes. So we did coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching uh, with uh, someone out on the West Coast, John Carter. Um, so weekly calls, uh, he helped us vet deals. Um, he's also a, a, realtor, a commercial realtor out there and he owns his own uh, commercial multifamily. So he's been through, you know, everything. Um, he helped us not lose our shirt, I would say. Right? Yeah. Like we had deals that we were like, this is amazing. And then we would send it to him and he was like, this is terrible. Yeah. So <laughs> we were like, okay, so move on. Right? So um, we definitely think you need to get educated, um, do some mentoring. You know, somebody that's been through the process enough times to know more than just a couple hurdles that could come up. So every single deal that Jamie and I have done, we're, we learn new things even still now. We've been through six or seven of them so yeah. far now. Um, so I definitely think there, you, you do need the, the education specific to commercial multifamily because mm -hmm. it's a whole different ball game. So um, if anybody's interested in that, Jamie and I do have a mentoring program that we can, uh, we'd be happy to talk to people yeah. about. One big nugget I think we took away from our training that we'll never forget is with multifamily, the bigger stuff, you'll have a hundred deals come across yes. your desk. You'll take a serious look at 10 of them and you'll put an offer in on one or two. Yeah. Like, and we were like, that is terrible odds. <laughs> but it's totally it's so true. true. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. Those are similar numbers to what I've been doing as of late too, like looking at a hundred deals and 10 are interesting and then yeah like you say one or two you actually put an offer in 
Can you put a value, like a dollar amount of what you guys have spent on education and mentoring? Because I think a lot of people just assume that they're gonna get all this information for free. And that is not the case. I know that, you know, for me, um, when people are, are reaching out to me and saying, you know, can I, can, I, can I pick your brain and can I do all this kind of stuff? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I, I'm happy to help in any way that I can, but you know, I, I've got to keep my business moving and rolling and, and I, you know, I'm happy to do that. But it's, it's also, whenever I've reached out to individuals that are in a place where I'd like to go, it's, there's a dollar amount to that. Can you tell me what you have potentially spent on educating yourselves? We love this question. Yeah. I'm so glad you asked this question because we have spent, um, so as of officially today, we have spent probably 135,000 Canadian because we were up to about 100,000 and just, you know, on Friday, I seen this other real estate program that I was so interested in and I know lots of other people that are in it. And I said to Jamie, we need to do this. I called the guy. It was 25,000 US dollars and I was like, sign me up because I mean, every time we do coaching, it takes us to the next level. Every time. I mean, we don't it's just, amazing. we don't just do any coaching. We do ones that really appeal to us yep. um, that have some proven track record. But I mean, it doesn't seem, it doesn't matter what we do. It always, we do a coaching session and yep. we increase our yep. worth essentially. It's ROI, right? I mean, we, I used to teach it all the time. It's like, it, we, it, as investors, we don't think about things from a cost perspective. We look at what's the return on investment. If I spend $25,000 on education in US dollars, is that gonna yield me 50 or $75,000 down the road? Well, then my ROI is, you know, three times what I invested. So that's good ROI. I don't think about the cost. I think about what it's gonna yield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, and we're grateful because the, the opportunity to have education is something that many people around the world don't get. Mm. So I, you know, we do have the opportunity and it doesn't have to be a $25,000, you know, US dollar training, but you need to find something that is gonna take you to that next level. And with people that actually have the experience and not just somebody that's offering the program, like you need to find out, you know, how many times have they done these strategies? Where did they get educated? All those kinds of things, so. And a lot of times, even just these coaching programs, um, it's not just the the uh, not just the material you're learning. It's the people you get to meet yes. along the way that really give you that value that um, helped you level up, it's basically. True. Yeah. Learn what they've done and how they've done things. And love it. I mean, just just a new circle of friends. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah, it's, that's it's amazing advice. And I think you guys are obviously living proof of the success of mentoring and coaching and hard work and due diligence and having a system and following it. So I, I love your story. Um, you know, I think it's really, really inspirational to, to so many people. And I know so many people are working with you and looking up to you. And so congratulations on the success of your business for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Uh, with that, I want to say thank you guys for joining me today. I'm going to leave all your information in the description below. If people want to contact you, they absolutely can. Um, and I just want to say again, thanks, thanks for joining me today. If you guys enjoyed the session with Leslie and Jamie, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You look super relaxed, which I'm sure is not the case. I'm sure you're working on 10 different projects right now. Uh, but thanks again for taking some time out of your day. I know you're super busy, and I look forward to connecting with you guys very soon. Thanks, thanks Darren. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, everybody.